Welcome to BizHack Live. I'm Dan Gretsch, CEO and founder of BizHack Academy and the host of BizHack Live, a weekly conversation uh, about the best technology and digital marketing practices for small businesses. Uh, and today uh, I'm very excited to welcome my dear friend, certified BizHack instructor and amazing digital marketer, uh, Cheryl Cattell. She's gonna be talking about LinkedIn and how to use LinkedIn to help build your personal brand. Um, this is incredibly important to you, whether you are the owner of a business, whether you're working for someone else or for yourself, people buy your company and mostly they buy you. And so you need to present yourself in the best way possible to help achieve those whatever ends you have, whether it's to sell your services to someone or it's to get hired by that person. Um, personal LinkedIn profiles are the number one place that potential partners will go when they're looking whether they wanna evaluate, whether they wanna do business with you. They'll look at your uh, how you describe yourself, what makes you tick. They'll also talk a lot about, uh, they'll also look at who your shared connections are. And that's also an incredibly important um, referral uh, tactic for folks who want to check you out and see if they're people you know in common. And it's also a great sales tactic if you are looking to sell into a company and you see that you're connected to someone uh, who's connected to your ultimate target. So LinkedIn is an incredible tool for marketing and sales, especially for B2B, but really it's something that every professional needs to understand. And today we're going to talk about that. Um, I wanted to recognize our partner today, South Florida Integrated Marketing Association, uh, an organization that Cheryl founded. We'll talk a little, she'll talk a little bit about that, uh, I'm sure, and we're gonna talk about that when I introduce her formally. But I really appreciate South Florida IMA's partnership uh, and sponsorship of season three of uh, BizHack Live. So coming up next week is another favorite uh, daughter of BizHack, um, this is uh, Tatiana McDaniel, who's the CMO of Happy V, an e-commerce company for female products. And she's going to talk about some of the incredible lessons that she learned in her first year as CMO after nearly two decades working at agencies. So going from working with big brands with big budgets as an agency uh, to then going in-house and working with a more constrained budget and a smaller staff and having to do a lot of the work that her clients had done in the past. It's a really fabulous perspective that she's gonna be able to bring and she's gonna talk about what happened when they went viral on TikTok and sold out and ran out of product and how they communicated that to all the people who had discovered them and got excited about them and then suddenly had to wait for six weeks to get the product they had bought. The week after that, um, I'm going to be presenting on our signature system, the BizHack lead building system. Uh, this is really the core of our digital marketing methodology. It's something that we're constantly refining and improving upon. And we've found that folks, even if you've already seen us present on the lead building system, come back, there'll be fresh examples and uh, innovations and additions to it. For instance, uh, over the holidays, we discovered an extra pillar. Uh, so we went from five to six pillars as we talked about the lead building system. So we're constantly seven years, 700 businesses, this iterative cycle of how to think about marketing yourself online in a systematic, easy to understand way. And we're very proud uh, of having built this and happy to share it with you. Uh, it's also the core of the our paid program, which is our five week digital marketers edge. And the week after that, you will you can join us for a celebration of the businesses that have been part of this current cohort. They're right now about halfway through, they launched their first Facebook ads. They're gonna be doing a follow up ad this week. Um, and you'll get to see real life case studies of small businesses and nonprofits using the techniques, the BizHack lead building system to actually generate leads and sales in a matter of weeks for their businesses. And then uh, after that, I'm very excited that we're gonna be talking about Clubhouse, the hottest social media platform on the planet. It's also one we're getting a ton of questions about. People were wondering, should I be on Clubhouse? How do I use Clubhouse? Can I use it to drive uh, my brand, my personal brand, my company's brand? Can I get leads? 
uh, and sales using Clubhouse. Uh, Dennis Yu, uh, CEO of Blitzmetrics and someone that Cheryl put me in touch with is gonna be talking about all of that and really help you think through what is Clubhouse, first of all, and more importantly, how can you use it to help your business? So I uh, really encourage you to, to come to that. If you want to sign up for all of them at once, we do offer a season pass where you'll get recordings and bonus materials from every session, and you'll also be able to support everything that we're doing here. We hope you uh, join us uh, for all of these sessions and sign up for a season pass. And with that, I wanted to take a minute and welcome my dear friend, Cheryl Cattell, 25 years experience as a digital marketer. Uh, she recently took on a new role as a senior digital marketing strategist at Starmark International, one of the top digital marketing agencies here in South Florida. She is a certified digital marketing coach with BizHack and spent uh, almost a year uh, working with our participants and, 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 and uh, as an instructor in our signature program. And Cheryl and I got the chance to, to know each other uh, really care, uh, closely and um, dear friend of mine. She's also just gotten her master certification as a life coach. I think it happened this past week. So congratulations for that. Uh, Cheryl is a phenomenal uh, sage and guide and, and has so much wisdom, not just about marketing, but about life. Um, so without further ado, it's my distinct honor to welcome my friend Cheryl Cattell to the stage. Thanks, Cheryl. Well, thank you. That's very sweet of you. I uh, just want to make sure, can you see the slides? Yes, we can. All right. Well, that was very touching, and um, I have just really cherished my relationship with BizHack, and I'm just glad to give back today. Um, uh, this topic, the uh, LinkedIn personal branding, actually came out of my life coaching. Uh, it, was, it turned out to be a wonderful tool to help people get on track with what they really wanted to do instead of talking about what they'd done in the past. So um, that's really where this program came from, and I'm excited to be sharing it. I'm not gonna cover everything here. Uh, I think Danny did a great job. Some of the brands I've worked with, Tra Travelocity, Mary Kay, E-Diets, Bank of America, and Blue Green Resorts locally here in Boca for about 10 years. Um, I also teach uh, on nights and weekends. Uh, right now at FAU, I'm involved in the digital marketing class as well as some of their MBA classes. And I was lucky enough to work for four years in Brussels, Belgium with Dow Corning. And that was an amazing eye opener. And in my spare time, I'm also a Hatha Yoga Pranayama instructor. And um, as uh, Dan said, I had started a, a coaching uh, business last year during COVID and um, am now happy to be associated with uh, my friends at Starmark, Some, uh, an agency that I have been a client of as well as uh, been involved with from the South Florida Interactive Marketing Association. So it's, it's like being home. All right, so today we're gonna get through why does LinkedIn matter? Uh, why should you care? Uh, you're gonna get a chance to score yourself and see how you're doing. I was, I, you know, I'm a gamification person. I love to know how am I doing and how can I get better? Uh, we'll also look at some tips and tricks I'll share with you. Um, and I should warn you, this is, is really kind of a beginner's uh, uh, class on, on LinkedIn for personal branding, but there's gonna be some gems in here that I, I hopefully uh, you're gonna be able to walk away with, even if you're an expert. So I'll share some tips and tricks. Uh, I'll talk about ways you can grow connections, and then I'll share with you the LinkedIn post algorithms, things that really will help you understand how to get your post to stay in the newsfeed longer and to increase your views. That's very important. If you're gonna spend the time to do the posts, you wanna get as many eyeballs on it as you can. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about engagement pods and then just new added, um, I've started experimenting with LinkedIn events. So I'll share my learnings there. All right, we're gonna start off with a poll and um, Lily, you want to, there it is. That's like magic. <laughs> All right. So the question is, just to get an idea of the level of engagement of the group that's on with us right now, 87 of us here, how often do you personally post on LinkedIn? Is it never? Uh, once in a blue moon, I think I'm 
I'm not sure how frequent blue moons, a couple times a year maybe, <laughs> monthly, a few times a week, daily, and more than once a day for the overachievers in the group. Why don't you go ahead and um, give us a, an answer on this. Let's see, I'm gonna say daily and submit, so. Are you able to see the the uh, results, or I'm the one in control of the poll right you now? You must share the results, oh man behind the curtain. Exactly. <laughs> well, we have uh, a few more people. We'll give it uh, three, two, one. Blast off. Okay. Now be sure to. Sh oh, there. Look at that. Oh wow. Oh goodness. All right. So the nevers and once in a blue moon are definitely leading the pack. Some good, uh, about 20% uh, monthly, a few times a week, and then not very many of us doing it daily. But I have to be honest, I don't go do a post every day. Um, I use Hootsuite and schedule them out a month or two in advance. So, all right, well, very good. Well, thanks. Uh, thank you so much, Dan, for sharing that. Let me show you, uh, I did the same post uh, on LinkedIn itself and asked, uh, for people to tell me how often they post. Now, no surprise, right? These are people who are on LinkedIn um, a lot, but it's interesting to see the difference here. About 57% of them are posting every day. Wow, that's, that sounds like overachievers, right? All right, well, let me tell you why it might be interesting for you. The case for LinkedIn, why would you want to spend time here? So last count, a around 700 million users, depending on when the, the survey was done or the research was done, uh, you know, between six and 750. So across 200 countries. Now that makes LinkedIn the largest social networking platform for B2B. But then again, even if you're B2C, there's a lot of consumers on LinkedIn as well. One of the things you don't see is that there's about 46 million students or recent grads and TikTok's not the only one with millennials, about 80 million millennials on LinkedIn. So it has a very broad range of people, countries, companies, et cetera. And about more, almost half of US professionals say they're, gonna, they're spending more time on social media because of being locked in. So interesting. All right, so um, just again, just the facts um, about 675 million monthly users. So for those of you who said a month, every month you're posting, um, that's, you're right in line. And interestingly enough, LinkedIn does skew a little heavier male uh, audience. There are about 30 million companies on uh, LinkedIn and an ad, this is kind of an interesting, an ad on LinkedIn can reach potentially about 12% of the world's population. Now, this is a number because I'm an avid email uh, marketer. Um, this, these open rates, 52% open rate if you use InMail, that's an average open rate for using that app on uh, LinkedIn. So, I mean, that's to, to salivate for. Now, the opportunity. This is interesting. Only about 3 million people on LinkedIn will share content every week. That's only a half of a percent of all people. So the thing about this is you have a chance to shine, right? It's not like a crowded cable network with billions or millions or hundreds of channels. You have an opportunity to really shine. If you take the time and you optimize your content and get it in front of people, there's not that much competition out there. Now, this is another interesting fact. About half of all traffic to a B2B site uh, will come from social media. So this is, again, another reason why even if you're in B2B, you want to be on social media. And again, about 7% of your contacts will receive your posts. So the, uh, the idea here is be consistent. Now, if you look at the pie chart on the right side of the, um, of the chart, you can see the, the breakdown between LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and then all the other social media channels in terms of driving traffic to B2B. All right, very good. All right, here comes another interactive portion of our program. Uh, Lilia, you wanna put that link in the chat. I'm gonna give you all a chance 
to um, see how you score. The, you'll, this link should take you to a page that looks like the one on the left. And then this red box that I've added the red square, that's where you want to click. You probably have to link uh, to log into LinkedIn and then see what your, they call it the social selling index is. So I'm going to invite everyone to do that right now. And if be brave, right? And tell us what is your social selling skill index? We hear you, Dan. Oh, there he's back. Okay. So while you're just be brave, it's okay. You know, no judgment here. Um, I'm sharing my score. This is mine. And actually, uh, I, there we go. 41. Thanks, Kelly. That's great. 32, 64, 68, 56. Wow. Okay. That's great. I, it doesn't sound like it's good, but you know what? The most important, keep your, keep your uh, screens open because I'm going to walk you through this. Oh, there's some really good ones. 64, 52. Now, personally, uh, 75 out of 100 doesn't sound like much to me. It doesn't sound good, but sizes and everything, right, Nathan? I totally agree <laughs> with you. Um, <laughs> so 75, I thought, wow, you know, what is this, a B minus, C plus? Um, but the numbers that are important that you want to look at are on top of your social skill, selling skill. Now, you like the breakdown because you can see where you have opportunities to grow, right? the orange, the purple, the greens, and the turquoise. This gives you an idea and you can click on the little question mark and it'll tell you how to increase your score there. The numbers that I look at are the one called industry SSI rank. And in this case, you can see that for everyone who's indicated the industry that I'm in, I'm in the top 1%. Okay, that number I like a little better. Um, and the one on the right is everyone in my network. So the 4,000 people that I'm connected to, I'm in the top 3% of that, of my, net, of my own network. So those are numbers that will tell you how you're doing relative to people in your industry and relative to the people you're connected to. This is a great place to start. Um, this is your benchmark. If you're going to start working with your profile, which probably is the reason you're here. Oh, Ross, you should be. Yeah, you could be teaching this class. Very good. Um, if you're going to start doing things to your profile, you want to know what your benchmark, where did I start? And then take a look at it later to see how, how you've improved, right? All right. Well, very good. Thank you for sharing. And there we go. All right, so we're gonna walk you through a couple of things that you wanna try. And the first thing is, we don't want you to spam your network. If you're going to be making changes to your profile, make sure that this setting right here, share job changes, education, work, anniversaries, et cetera, says, no, I am not sharing that. Now, where you find it is at the top of the page, there's a thing, uh, this, this little, circle with your picture with a down arrow says me and you click it and then scroll down to where it says settings and privacy it's underlined in red when you click on that it'll open this box down below and you'll see visibility of your linkedin activity scroll down to that and then make sure if it's, this says yes change it to no and then start editing and don't worry about bothering people all right profile tips these are um, my, uh, my top tips on how to make your profile really rock. You'll want to get a professional headshot. Um, one thing that is very unprofessional is t-shirts or somebody in their shorts or uh, somebody in a cocktail party. In a, 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 seriously, I saw somebody with, with uh, somebody had a cocktail in their hand behind their head. So if you don't, have a professional one and you uh, haven't got one shot yet, the least you want to do is remove the background from any picture you're currently using. And there's a, a great, uh, I think it's uh, remove.bg, um, which is a uh, website where you can put your picture up and it'll remove the background. If you have a Canva paid account, you can do the same thing there. It's a very, very quick five second, you know, you just click the picture and it's done. 
definitely worth it. It it really helps to focus on uh, you instead of what the, somebody trying to figure out where were you and what were you doing and how, who were you with. Um, I also recommend that you uh, use a button up shirt or something with a collar, something that would be appropriate for um, a, a variety of uses. So um, even if your job, even if you're a lifeguard, right, you want to overdress for the part for the interview. This is kind of like an interview. The next thing you'll want to make sure you do is have a background image. And that's this top banner. It's called on Canva LinkedIn banner. And if you pull that up, LinkedIn has hundreds for you to choose from. I personally like the collage of things that are important to me. So, um, you know, winning an Adrian Award at the Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association or uh, working with Romeo Brito on a program about website creativity. Um, and then this is one of my favorite singers, Chanter's uh, Sonata Power. So this is a little bit of an insight into me and what's important to me. And um, I encourage you to do the same. Or you can be safe and use one of the um, backgrounds that Canva has available for free. All right, so next, moving down, there is this place where usually it will pull in your title and the company you're working at. That is a default. Oh, I skipped over credentials. This is optional as well. Um, at the When you put in your name, you can put in a comma after your last name and list any credentials that you may want to show. So for example, um, you know, this is my master certified life coach. I'm an MBA and I'm a lion. Ah, oh, not that kind of lion. So um, LION stands for LinkedIn Open Networker. And what people will do if they're just getting started on LinkedIn and they're trying to build their contacts, they might search for LIONS and connect with us to help them get started. So that's what that credential means. All right, here's a nugget. Hopefully you don't know about this. I just learned about it a few weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago. There's a little a sound icon that is available for you to record your name pronunciation. And so uh, if you have a name that is difficult to pronounce, I highly recommend you use this. In my case, it's not hard to, rep to um, pronounce my name, but I frequently get called Cheryl Cattle. And so what I've done is I've recorded my name pronunciation using the mobile app. It's the only place you can do this. You need to have the mobile app, and then you go in to, to edit your profile, and then underneath your name is a place to add name pronunciation. So that's a, that's a tip, that's a trick that you won't find on the desktop application. Highly recommend, you can play it. Now, once it's in, somebody, anybody comes to my profile, they can play it on the desktop. So, little trick. Maybe, hopefully that's a new one. All right, so let's keep moving down. So you can edit this, um, this headline, right? And you can put anything you want. And this is where I work with my coaching clients and, and ask them, what is it you want to be when you grow up? This is a great place to put that. So you just put it out there for the universe, right? And um, then these come in automatically, but you can change them. There's a drop down where you can select Let's say, for example, my MBA was from C Central Michigan University. Nothing against Chippewas, I love them, but my undergrad was from Michigan State and I had more of an affinity to that because that's where I went away to go to college at CMU. I was doing it on nights and weekends. So anyway, uh, that's a little bit about the top of the profile and this is where all the cool stuff happens. Now, what I wanna show you is I wanna show you how a company can potentially leverage the top of the profile for uh, their employees and clean it up. Same information here, but what I've done is I've added a branding box uh, to pull in the logo of my new employer. So you can see I have Starmark, the Starmark uh, star, and then it matches very well with my current place of employment. So this is a very simple thing that will help extend the brand and also help associate you with the brand. So, all right, moving right along. The next section is the about section. And what I highly recommend is in this section, I would use first person. 
So you are literally telling your elevator story. This is what you are passionate about. This is what you love to do. And this is really your opportunity to shine, to differentiate yourself. And I try to make it very conversational. And so that's my recommendation. This is also a great place to list core competencies. So things that you've been involved with. So for me, customer acquisition, uh, customer centric, client services, et cetera, opportunity identification, speed to market, et cetera. Now, further down, I listed um, related job experience. And what's this? These are jobs that are not on my LinkedIn profile because they were a little bit ago. And I don't want to put everything on there because it makes me look uh, old. No. So this is a good place. If you'd like to list jobs that maybe you don't have on your LinkedIn profile, I don't recommend going beyond 10 or 15 years. And so this is where they would go. And then technical skills, as well as I've worked with some clients where we list language skills. This is a great place for language skills. So this is all under the about section. If you don't find it on your profile, you may need to add it. So that's something to think about. All right, there might be one or two of us who are looking for a job, right? And so I'll give you some tips on how you can do that. First of all, poor Brian, um, please do not use this background. This says, I am a LinkedIn amateur. So please make sure you replace this with something. <laughs> Just go to Canva, it's free, and pick one and then upload it here. So um, anyway. So the tips or tricks to have this, this is, um, this is a way to get the looking for new opportunity at the top of your profile. So I think uh, in Brian's case, I think he's just graduated from Lynn University and so he's looking for a new opportunity. Now, the way you do it is you add a new, um, a new employer or you add a new position, right? And so you add for the company's name, looking for new opportunity. And then for the current position, you say whatever it is you're looking for, digital executive. What this does, it puts that availability right up at the top and center, and it also will come up in keyword searches. And uh, recruiters, hiring companies, makes it very easy for them to find you. Now, the other thing you can do is turn on this little green open to work. And that, you do that right here, right underneath the, um, where you're located and your contacts. So those are some tips if you're looking or uh, looking to upgrade or looking to uh, change. Next, want to talk about growing your connections. And the more people you're connected to, that's this is my philosophy, it doesn't have to be yours. But um, what I, my philosophy is I connect with everybody, but I'm a lion. And um, therefore, because I don't, maybe you're working someplace that has nothing to do with me today, but maybe tomorrow I might find that you're someplace where I do need a connection. So I'm not very um, discerning. I will connect with everyone. I think about it like, what would I do in a cocktail party? Somebody asked me, um, you know, I don't want to connect with vendors because they're bothersome and they, you know, they bug me. But I think about it at a cocktail party. If somebody came up to me and handed me their business card and I saw they were a vendor, I wouldn't throw it at them or throw it on the ground or stomp on it. I would put it in my pocket and that's what I do on LinkedIn. So if you're trying to grow your connections, I highly recommend just everybody you meet, just do it right away, be diligent, go in, add them, connect with them. Be sure to add a note, though, to tell them how you they might remember you, because not everybody's a lion. This, um, oh, and then I'm going to skip over to the right. Join groups and add members. So there's a couple of things that you can do here. Look for groups um, that are speaking to where you want to go. So, for example, I'm working with a client who is just, uh, just graduated from from a, a very nice school and he's in business, but his desire is to be a film director. So I encourage him, go join film groups, film in employment groups, film discussion groups uh, for people in the industry. 
and then go down those groups once you're uh, admitted. Most of them are invitation only. Once you get admitted, go down the group and just say, hey, Kelly, I see we're in this film director's group and I thought it would be good to make a connection. That's a great way to, um, to build up your, your contacts, relevant contacts for where you're going. All right, I'm gonna come back to this middle. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but hopefully very soon we'll get back to using this. Um, if you're in an event like a, a seminar, a conference, a webinar, an exhibit where there are a lot of people, um, this is something you can do with your cell phone. So you open the app and it will only work with Bluetooth, the people who are on Bluetooth. You go to the My Network on your phone. That's in the bottom left here, circled in blue. And what you'll see is on this page, there'll be this blue circle floating, which is not very descriptive. You like, what is this? So what happens is when you click on it, you'll see this thing called Find Nearby. It's off by default. And if you click it on, anyone that is in that particular seminar or on premise close by will show up here and you can connect to them, add them. So in this case, these two were already connected. And this one is, is these are potential people. And this makes it very easy to go down and, and add pretty much everybody who's in the room. You can send an invite to everybody in the room. So as you can imagine, this is a great way to find people that have shared interest and also to quickly increase your network. All right, a couple of tips. So before you go on to the tips, a um, uh -huh. uh -huh. couple of questions uh, that, that I've been kind of collecting and curating. So uh, let's start with um, uh, this question from Rosemary, is the info under related job experience searchable? I'd like to include past jobs, not in the chronology. Um, I'm thinking she's, I'm trying to see where that would be. The info under related jobs. Yes, it is searchable. Yes, correct. Yes. Got it. Mm -hmm. And a related question, is there a way to get mm -hmm. your resume out of, um, Chronolo chronological order, if they're like things that happened earlier in your career that you want to highlight uh, more? Yeah, there's, um, I'm trying to think that HR professionals, there's, uh, I've worked with right management. There's a thing that you can do, which really just talks about core competencies and um, leverageable experience. And it has nothing to do with chronology. So you, you put like the things that were on the core, core competencies, um, related job experience, uh, technical skills, um, and you just leave off the the uh, the dates and and times and places and so on. So yes, there is. I think if you uh, if you Google uh, core competencies resume format, that might get you what you're looking for, Rosemary. Great. Um, Kelly Porter asked if it's a business page and not your personal profile, do you use the logo of the company? If it's a, you know, I, so if it's a business page, absolutely use the yeah. logo. In my case, I decided to use the logo um, of Starmark on my personal page um, because it's a it's a, a part of who I am. It's a part of what I'm doing. It's a part. It was important, not required, but um, you will see, you know, like Mark Zuckerberg or or you know Mark Cuban, they will have their company, uh, I, you know, their, their, bro, their logos on their personal pages, because it's, it's kind of like, you know, uh, they're one in the same. Elon Musk is Tesla to most people. So uh, it, is, it is acceptable to do that. It just depends. It's whatever you're comfortable with. And uh, yeah, I would definitely, as you can see, I did. The, the, now, I don't know if you'll cover this, but this is another kind of basic LinkedIn tip, which is if you're a business owner, even if you're not gonna be terribly active, you definitely wanna create a company page and yes. upload your logo to your company page because if you don't, you'll have a grayed out icon next yes. to your company in your work experience. And there's nothing that signals I am small more than a grayed out logo. There's no way to add a logo to your mm -mm. work experience. You have to have a company page with that logo in order to get that logo up there. So this is mm -hmm. a very common error I see in business owners who don't really need LinkedIn. Um, 
company pages for their marketing. And I, I strongly encourage you to do it anyway so you don't have that grayed out logo. Yep. We're also getting a lot of questions about Lion. So Lion is LinkedIn Open Network. Is that a self-designation or is that something that you become uh, through some sort of certification process? And how do you... Yeah, no, that's a good question. It's No, it's, self to, it's self-defined. Um, LinkedIn does have something that if you invite people and they refuse you and report you as a spammer, um, that you will then be turned off and you won't be allowed to invite people for, it's kind of like you have to go in timeout. Um, and that's where the lion term came from because some, when people first got started and they, you know, started adding everybody, um, and then they got turned off. And so it's sort of like start, stop, start, stop. Uh, so that's when it was, it is self-designated. You decide if you are going to be a LinkedIn open networker, and then you put it and add it to your profile. Yeah. Question. You know, Peggy asked a question about a small nonprofit. No matter what size organization you work for, strongly recommend you create a company page on LinkedIn yes. and Facebook. It's essential. It also takes about 15 minutes. Just do it. Don't overthink it. Uh, you do not have to keep, especially company pages on LinkedIn, there's not a big expectation for a lot of content there, but it is necessary to make your organization look credible. Uh, Adela Abaji asked, my target audience speaks Spanish. Is it better to create my LinkedIn only in Spanish? Mm -hmm. You can. There's a languages section. There's an option to turn it into Spanish. Yes. And then you want to make sure. Yep. And um, I, have, I have clients who do it in, in several languages, German, Spanish, French. Yeah. Uh, Ariel Biscayar asks, can you create two profiles under the same name? No. No, I just don't didn't. see why you would do that. It seems like a terrible idea. I mean, whoops, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, I thought I had muted it. Um, I did mute it. Weird. Uh, so um, the, really generally speaking, you. Facebook and LinkedIn, you want to associate your identity with your principal profile. Yeah. If you have any interest in generating leads from it, you're going to get yourself into all sorts of problems if you're trying to use it for business advertising purposes. So I strongly recommend that you um, that you do that. Uh, mm -hmm. We have um, <laughs> Jeanette kind of is saying that they got really mad at her for do, doing that. Um, and I think uh, people are getting a lot of solicitations, Cheryl, right now. Um, a lot of salespeople, I think, are using automation. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so their inboxes are getting clogged. Um, you know, I, I think that's sort of a cost of doing business in LinkedIn yeah, right sure. now. So I'm not sure there's much to say about that. It's, it's, it's becoming... Uh, you know, Microsoft owns LinkedIn now. I, do, do you think the fact that they own LinkedIn uh, matters um, to the average user? Um, I've noticed uh, a much higher level of sophistication on their ad platform since yes. Microsoft took over. Um, and frankly, I think a much smoother technology, both on the mobile and desktop. I think, in other words, the product has improved a lot. And to Microsoft's credit, they haven't really mussed with the good things about it. So I, I feel like their ownership has been, by and large, a good thing. Yeah, and I think with the, the professional version where you can go in and actually send emails to people that have emails on file, that's another thing. If you don't want to be bothered, take your email off your off of your profile um, because they do have a, an automated program now that I can go in and pull up all my 4,000 contacts and send them an email using at 15 cents each uh, You know, using an integration with uh, an, an email provider. So. That's another thing you can do to, to do that. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, Dan, is company logos. One thing I've found is a lot of times the company pages have been added after I've put them on my profile. So if you've got a lot of those little gray buildings, that's what they are, it's, they, they line up and they look all like gray buildings, go back into your profile and type in, try different ways of typing the name of the company to see if you can get a match. And then it'll change that gray box into a, an icon. And that's a, another tip. Yeah, that, that might address Jane Moore's question. Um, what, what happens is sometimes they will use AI to automatically populate companies based on what people are putting in their yes. experience. And that's when you get the gray boxes. It'll show up as a company, but it won't have the logo. Mm -hmm. And so that's how you know, you know, try it again. Uh, and it might take a day. 
uh, for them to recognize your company. But it's really important that that logo appear there. Um, and let me give it back over to you. I'll answer okay. the other questions in the Q&A. Keep them coming, guys. That's what makes this fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. All right, so very good. What else can you do? Uh, things, again, this is really more targeted towards the, the personal profile. I probably need to do a business uh, version of this, but uh, I, this is enough to, to fill our time. Another thing you can do is recommendations. So um, here you can request a recommendation or you can give recommendations. Again, very highly recommended that, that you get recommendations. Um, the idea here is you probably want to try to get at least one from every company or volunteer organization that you have listed on your profile. It's just a like a, a for me, gamification, right? It's a it's a goal for me to hit. It's a it's much, much more valuable than asking somebody for a letter of recommendation that you have in a file and you you copy it or or scan it or something. Um, this is you can get a lot more uh, in one place and a lot more variety and um, you know can always be updated. So that's one of my recommendations, get recommendations. Another thing that you can do, and this is really more for uh, recognizing people uh, in your network, you give kudos. Uh, LinkedIn also will reward you with improving your social selling skills number but they do love kudos and you know using the platform as a way to celebrate and share celebration so just a couple of other things oh here's that little here's the gray icon that we were talking about this is the the default all right so next we're going to talk about how to get your get more news feed views with your post right so i shared this one this is like a case study um, uh, at Nordis, when I was working with Nordis uh, in their digital marketing group, they would do uh, a blog post about once every two to three weeks. And then just doing what I call this the, uh, the lazy or easy share. <laughs> um, what you do is you put a little blurb, you put a link to the blog, to an article, to someplace. And when you do that, you're signaling to LinkedIn, if somebody reads your posts and they like it, they're going to leave LinkedIn. And guess what? LinkedIn doesn't want them to leave. You with me? So I would get around 100, 100 or so views of my post in my feed by doing what I call the easy, lazy share a link post. The great thing about it is you put the link in and boom, you got a beautiful picture, you got the headline, everything, it's wonderful it's also not as productive. So spend a little bit more time, just a little bit more time. What you wanna do is you put in the text, you upload an image, preferably the same image as on the blog or the article. Then you put the link to the full article in the first comment. Now, if you click see more, it says to read the full article, see the first comment. Now, what happens is, you can see right here, we saw about a tenfold increase in the number of post views. So this made it even more worth the time. A couple of other tips for you. Add three to five profile names. And you do that by putting the at sign and then Cheryl Cattell. And if I'm in your network, I'll show up. If I am in your post, your post will appear in my newsfeed and I will be most likely to see it. This is a great way. If there's somebody, uh, someone's attention that you're trying to get at an organization or, or a company or an individual, put their at sign here and, and call their attention. Well, make sure you're saying something worthwhile, right? That's important. Um, so here's a great tip. Another thing, it, you can also put company names and you can show up in a company's feed. The other thing you want to do is you want to add hashtags. So for example, here, business continuity, disaster recovery, these are hashtags. Again, hashtags, I think there was a case study done on Instagram recently that showed hashtags with and without could increase your post views, people finding it, searching and finding it by a thousand percent. So if you're an Instagrammer, hashtags are king. But if you're on LinkedIn, which is what we're talking about today, 
it doesn't hurt and it will help you come up in some searches. So there's uh, tips there. Oh, this is the last uh, example of this. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's one last thing. You wanna get five comments in 30 minutes. You see here on the likes, that those don't count. Facebook, they don't give you any love for likes. You wanna get 12 comments, or five comments. In this case, we had 12 with, within minutes, or no, this one's three days. But you wanna get five comments within the first 30 to 60 minutes. And you say, wow, what is that about? Well, LinkedIn sees this engagement, immediate engagement, and they say, this content must be valuable. This is the kind of content we want to make sure is high up in the feed and appears. So in this case, you can see the Peter Shankman event for South Florida Interactive Marketing Association had 1,500 views, so a 15-fold increase over the normal, easy posting way. All right, so next, we're going to talk about how to get those five comments in 30 minutes. So we've got another interactive session. Oh, thank gosh, that's magic. Thank you, Lilia. That's beautiful. We're going to find out, have you ever used a LinkedIn pod? So you've got three answer choices. Yes, no, and what in the world is a pod? And it's not an iPod, okay? This is a LinkedIn pod. All right, so what in the world is a pod? The secret to five comments. All right, we have five. A lot of you haven't answered yet. Uh, so only two people know what a pod is so far. Wow. Anybody oh, else? <laughs> I can tell if you're not paying attention because you haven't responded to the poll yet. Thank you, guys. Five. <laughs> wake up, wake up. Wake up. Come on, there are 20 more of you, 30 more of you who haven't done it. Come on. Oh, there they are. They're waking up, Cheryl. We're getting Good. up. Good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming Guys, back. make Cheryl feel great about this. Five, I do four, feel good. three, two, one. And the results are, what in the world is a pod? And no, wow. Three people. All right, we got three podsters. That's great news. Thank you all for participating and waking up. All right, so let's move on. And let's talk about what is a pod. So LinkedIn pods, usually they're called engagement pods and they can form for different purposes. So most pods equal a group of friends or people who agree to like and comment on each other's LinkedIn posts. Now, do you see how you can get five comments in 30 minutes? Ideally, the best group size 20 to 30. Uh oh, it came back. The, the, the poll. Oh, there it is. Okay. So 20 to 30 people, and then this is the kicker. You have to reciprocate. So you can't just go dump your post and say, go comment. You also have to see their post and go comment on theirs. Um, I belong to a pod. We uh, agree on Tuesdays and Thursdays between 9 and 10 a.m. to reciprocate. So that's the time when I try to plan the posts that I'm going to share for the week. And I'll go in and literally I can just click down the list. You can't, it's not about giving a heart or liking or whatever, thumbs up. You want to leave a comment that is at least shows that you've read the content and can comment on it intelligently. So, so just to be super clear what a pod is, <laughs> it's like a chain email. I mean, it's like a group email. It's a group of people who've all agreed on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings to like and comment on each other's posts, and they alert each other through a group email, which is it's, in InMail. It's, well, yeah, it's in the messages. It's in the messaging, you know, where you get, where you do get InMail, but it's not InMail. It's just the message feature on LinkedIn. Thank you, Dan, that's yeah, very- Yeah, so we call, it, we call it a pod, but it's not like you can go into LinkedIn and search for the word pod and create a pod. It's, it's more of a term of art we use like I'm in Cheryl's Cattell clan and every Tuesday on this kind of group uh, LinkedIn email chain, they'll send, hey guys, here's my, my post for the week. Uh, and everyone will jump in there and like and comment okay. on it. And then uh, we do the same and get reciprocated in that way. It's basically, as, as Cheryl was saying, the key to making this algorithmic trick work is getting five comments in 30 minutes. 
This is a group of people who every week, twice a week, commit to giving you those five comments you need. Right. And they, yeah, they got, they basically got your back. <laughs> so of course, not everybody can participate every single week, but at least it's, it's our intent, intention. So the way you create a pod is you go to the messages app, you start to write a message and name the message or the pod, and then you can add members. You can remove members if they don't help and they don't reciprocate, and you can add new ones. So if there's anyone who is interested in joining a pod or creating a pod, um, Lilia, could you put this link in the in the chat? Uh, Josh Stein, Steinle, uh, he has a, a step by step with screenshots of how to start a pod, and so that's that's what I'd recommend. If you would just like to uh, join a pod, you can send me at the end. I'll give you my LinkedIn uh, profile link send me a, a connection request and let me know that you'd like to join the pod and I'll be happy to add you, okay? All right, lots of fun. Now, there are there is an article actually written about the pros and cons of pods. And as you can see, the cons are bigger than the pros, but let's talk through them. The pro is it does amplify your reach. One thing I love about it is uh, there's a lot of biz hackers that are in my pod and I get to see what they're up to. I, I love that part of it because I get to stay in touch with them and I can see how their business is evolving and what things they're doing. And I've even bought a pillow, Dan, a hundred dollar pillow from one of our biz hackers as a result of one of a promotion he was running. He did give it to me at a great discount. But um, so that part is really fun. And pods are amazing for employees. This is probably the best use of a pod is if you're a company posting and you wanna get your, um, your newsfeed views up, ask employees to join the pod, click on the link, they go make their comments and they're back to work within a few minutes. You don't have to send an email, you don't have to you know, badger them, it's, it makes it very easy. Now, the cons. This is why I say likes don't count and you wanna make sure your engagement is not superficial. So it putting a thing like, thanks for sharing is not, it is not engagement. So take the time to do it right, keep your commitment. And I also wanna say LinkedIn does not endorse pods. You're always better off to, to build an organic, genuine engagement, but, they will work until you get your engagement up, right? If you've just started a new company, you've got Zippo for followers. You've got nobody who's seen your post. And so you've spent a lot of time and effort in those and you wanna make sure that they do get seen. So pods are a good way to get to the organic, genuine engagement. So there you go. This is just a, a quick high level view of when LinkedIn global engagement is the highest. What's interesting is this is in Eastern time. So you can see that the United States is a big driver of um, engagement. So the best times are usually on Wednesdays, eight to 10 uh, and noon, and then Thursdays, nine, and then one to 2 p.m. and Friday again at nine. What the, the uh, navy blue, the darker the blue, the higher the engagement, right? That's just to give you an idea. If you had to just say, okay, I can't, you know, I'm, I don't have Hootsuite and I can't schedule it to the minute. Uh, what are the best days to post? Okay, Wednesdays, Thursdays, um, and then safest times, if you need a broader range, Tuesday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m., times to avoid Sundays and 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. So that's how you get the highest return on your investment. Get out there while people are online. All right, wrapping up just real quickly, I wanted to say a few things about LinkedIn events. Um, I had just done uh, uh, an experiment with LinkedIn events. Uh, what I was amazed at the results, right? They're great for hosting business related events. You have the ability to go in, set up a meeting and invite your contacts, right? They make it very easy for you to extend your invitation, which, and if you've got, you know, 4,200 uh, connections, it's, it's a pretty powerful tool, right? Also, it makes it very easy for your invitee to accept the invitation. It's one click. 
your invites will show up in the news feed. You'll, it'll show up on my network page. If you're lucky, when you go to my network, there's a where you say accept people who have invited you to connect. You can uh, see some events that have been curated based on who you are and what things you've shown interested in, like the digital marketing trends, uh, virtual summit. So these are actually selected based on what I my activity on LinkedIn. Your event could show up here, right? So this is great. And um, if you use Facebook Live, uh, Facebook Live, oh, LinkedIn Live, which is relatively new, you'll get it, everybody who's online or on LinkedIn will get a notification that Cheryl Cattell is now live. Now I didn't do that with this particular uh, event, and I'll tell you why. The cons are you cannot force people to use a registration link when you use their events setup today. So what happens is you have to go in and manually enter their information into Zoom or Eventbrite or whatever. And if you don't, there's no email reminder and you also have to pay attention because they have the ability to say, you can email me later, true or false. So. Let me just show you what that looks like. So this was the event uh, that I did a test on, it, very <laughs> the same event. Uh, this was with the Timeshare magazine, uh, the Resort Trades magazine. Um, so you can see uh, 327, actually I think it ended up, ended up being 400 people um, RSVP'd. And then what I could do is I could go in and say, okay, click, you have to click something to get these little squares to show up. And then you can go down the list and say, okay, yes, 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 or select all. So that makes it very easy. And then here on the event page, if you're the organizer, you'll see a place to download everyone who's RSVP. And that's where you wanna make sure you pay attention to the true false and do not add anyone who said, no, you cannot email me um, into your, into your uh, CRM. So just a few things. All right, wrapping up hopefully right on time uh pick something just pick one thing that's all you need pick one thing and do it just just be nike uh things i suggest get a professional headshot if you live locally again reach out to me i've got a a, a guy who will come to your house for a uh, hundred dollars and he's got masks and and gloves and he'll take your headshot so um and that's here in the tri-county area add a background image get five recommendations go out and give five kudos set a goal for how many connections you want to have by a specific date tell somebody else you set that goal and then have them keep you honest right uh, improve your social sell selling sc score uh, start or join a pod and then the most important thing connect with me and there should be a link uh, if you want to add that in the chat Lilia um, it's been my uh, my pleasure to join you today. I've put some pictures here from our company annual meeting uh, that we just had a few weeks ago. Um, the company I work for, because we can't get together physically, we do it in virtual reality. And I do have a minute video that I will show if we have time. So I'll make that optional. Go for it. You wanna see it? Okay, all right, hang on. Let's see, I have to do a new share and there it is. Let's see. Okay. Can you see? Good afternoon, everybody. Hey. Good Hello. afternoon. Hello. All right, you ready to have some fun? Hey, welcome to the hangar. Is this the coolest space ever? Who's ready for some work? Escape to Amelia Island. Your very own paradise awaits. Say goodbye to 2020. Who's happy about that? <laughs> Amen.
there are definitely other things that we can do during sprint planning. We're like, hey, we can get a portion of this done this sprint. I'm taking a minute. Let's start this new chapter and let's start it by talking about wellness. Following your star, you bring the best of yourself to work every day. That includes your passion to explore and your entrepreneurial spirit. All right. That's, that's where I'm working now. That's phenomenal. It, it also is kind of sad. <laughs> it's like the world we live in, we're going to probably one day just download ourselves into the, into the internet and just that's how we're going to experience life. Um, so, uh, we have a couple open questions for our Q and a, uh, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, thank you so much, Cheryl. That was phenomenal. Um, and you know, what I find is when you go back to the basics, you often remind yourself of best practices that you yourself, uh, need to do. And, um, you know, one of the things I am going to take away from this is I really think there's a lot of experience that I have listed in my resume. That's kind of gumming up like the key elements and you know there's a tendency to list everything and that sometimes can be when you get mid-career counterproductive so really uh and i love that the the framing is to think about where you want to go rather than where you've been yes i think that's beautiful and so like all of us have different threads in our careers and you you can think of it as like which thread do you want to pull on in order to kind of talk about your experience so for instance uh, right when I graduated from college in 1999, I joined a startup and was the head of marketing for a startup founded by Eric Ries, the founder of the Lean Startup Methodology. And um, and then for 20 years was a journalist. So like that little experience very early in my career, right before the dot-com bubble burst, uh, is actually become very important to me now later in my career, whereas it was sort of just like a weird, you know, false start. Um, for most of my journalism career. So that kind of thing, you know, pulling that out. Yeah. Eric Reese has become a major thought leader in the space. You know, that now is an important um, aspect of my background. So um, Jeanette uh, Detheridge asked uh, that you had said, said that you send an email at about 25 cents per email. 15, it's 15 cents. Yeah, there's a integration on LinkedIn. It's, what is it? EYs, do you know what it is, Dan? Uh, no. I don't personally use it. I do know that Productive Power uses it um, and saw that a, a demo of how they use it. It's 15 cents. So there's, if you just Google um, LinkedIn uh, email integration and they charge 15 cents an email to basically, you can take all of your first, first level contacts and send them an email. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, Stacy C asked, um, is there a recommended length for your posts or articles uh, on LinkedIn? Any restrictions there? No. There, so, so I'm lazy and I do all my social media posts are the same. So uh, you have to go with the lowest common denominator. Hello, Twitter. Right. So it's always the Twitter, the 140 word count or uh, character counts that I'm, I'm struggling against. So I try to keep I just because it's just me and it's, it's just an act of love. I don't make any money from my post. Um, I, I do the lowest common denominator. So, And LinkedIn used to have something called Pulse, which was different than your posts, which was more like a blogging format. Is LinkedIn Pulse still a thing? Do you know? I don't, I haven't seen it, but what they do have is LinkedIn articles, right? Okay. So it's like a blog on LinkedIn that they host. So maybe that replaced it. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. So one recommendation that I've been given is when you have a blog, you want to put that on your website, right? Because that's really where you want traffic to be generated. But you can also put those blog posts on LinkedIn. And ideally, you can put like an excerpt and then direct people to your full blog post. That would be a recommended best practice. You can do something similar with Medium as well. And you know, Google often will punish you for having duplicative content in multiple sites, but they don't punish you if you post uh, your website blog post on LinkedIn and Medium. So that's kind of my recommended best practices. If you have, let's say, a 500-word blog post on your website, 
you can also put it on Medium, which is like Twitter for blogging. It was created by one of the founders of Twitter and then LinkedIn. Um, and that's a really good way to do that. Mm -hmm. Stacy also asked, in order to make a B2B connection, companies with products, is it recommended to share benefits of products on LinkedIn in posts? I so, don't see any reason why not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, think about it like if you're at a party and you immediately are like, hi, my name's Dan Gretsch from BizHack. Uh, our average participant makes $29 in revenue for every $1 in ad while advertising for our course. We also increase your confidence and make it easier for you to hire and manage people. It's like, who the are you and why are you talking to me like that? So Right, so let me give you another example because Ellen, Ellen is on, Ellen Crane and I both succumb to the pillow talk. Um, somebody from Fizak. Um, Do you like posted, the pillow? I, my God, it's amazing. Okay, it's really <laughs> amazing. But um, you know, he posted and said, this is an amazing pillow. We just added it to our line. It's a green pillow and it's better than memory foam. And he got three sales out of it, right, Ellen? <laughs> I saw she, she said in the chat that she bought two. She exactly. <laughs> so uh, that's a different that's a different way to do the same thing, right? You know, we're really proud. We're you know contributing to the green environment. You know, this is recent whatever it is, and then Henry Fan could do with a hundred dollar pillow. It's amazing. Anyway. Yeah, Sean M asks, is it better to write articles or posts to improve SSI? You know, when you look at the SSI, you'll see there are four factors that. Uh, factor into it. And if you press mm -hmm. the question mark, it'll tell you how to increase uh, your SSI. Um, I mean, ultimately, you're not on LinkedIn to increase your SSI. You're on LinkedIn to drive sales for your company and uh, to build uh, connections that will uh, become profitable for you. So I wouldn't uh, stress about your SSI. Um, your That's SSI a is a lagging indicator. If you're using yeah. LinkedIn effectively, you're making money with it. And that's where you should focus, not on some arbitrary AI generated metric that's designed to make you feel unhappy. Yeah, um, I, no, it's not designed that, but it's- It is too, like you're way better than 75%. You are. I'm in the top 1% of my of my industry. I know, but they put you 75 just to kind of like give you that little bit of like, I'm a A student and I'm getting a C score. Brooke, Brooke, they do that on purpose. Brooke Ellis, our sales team is around 25 people. Is it advisable to form a pod made of 25 people in the same mm -hmm. company, mm -hmm. we're all in different markets, states, et cetera? Yes, absolutely. That's a great use of a pod. Because Fabulous use. Everybody, everybody has the same goal, right? They all want to make sure the company is successful. So makes sense. Yeah. And there was an earlier question from Jane Moore about whether it's beneficial to have them be in the same industry. And the answer is yes, if you can manage it, because their networks are going to be more useful yes. to you. Yes. So like if you're all travel industry vet, uh, vendors, fabulous, right? Because then you're all selling to a similar universe, but you each know different elements of it. What happens when you comment on a post and the engagement increases is basically that post is now being shared with your network. That's really what's happening. So absolutely, like to have the kind of hodgepodge that um, Cheryl's Cattell clan, it, it's certainly very helpful, but if you really wanna be targeted about it, if you can do it within an industry or even yeah. within salespeople in your company, great. They're also gonna be far more motivated to do it. There, there's obviously um, challenges where you have kind of freeloaders on pods and you have to monitor that. Um, is there a way to incorporate, this is from Jeffrey Von Stein, my 4,000 LinkedIn contacts into my 2,000, basically into a CRM. Can he integrate his LinkedIn contacts into a CRM? So not that I am aware of. Um, like I said, the, the thing that Productive Power that Brett's using, um, Dan, is you can access them and send them emails, but I, don't, I didn't see that you can download them. So yeah, there's I, not an easy way to do that. We didn't cover this, but there's a whole session to be done on a product that LinkedIn has called Sales Navigator. Yeah. And Jeffrey, honestly, what you're really talking about is Sales Navigator. You mm -hmm. want to, what, what it allows you to do, Sales Navigator, is rather than limiting yourself to people you're already connected to, it allows you to write cold emails to people with titles and profiles that match your ideal customer. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a, I, I'm a member of LinkedIn uh, Sales Navigator. It's a fabulous sales tool and you should absolutely explore it. And um, Lilia, if you could throw just the Sales Navigator link in so that people can explore it on their own. 
Um, and then Jane asked, can you be in multiple pods and yet, you know, as much yeah. time as you want to give to it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, what are you going to do with your LinkedIn profile that uh, you were reminded yourself to do uh, by giving this presentation? Is there any, any change that you're going to make uh, as a result of your own presentation? Well, I did just make a, a change with the branding and I think I need to change my, my uh, headline. So as a result of this, by looking at it, it was like, oh, it still says, you know, it's still put, talking about the certified life coach as, as my lead. So I'll probably need to change that. I love it. Yeah. Um, and Lilia, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Any change that you're going to make uh, as a result of, um, you know, this presentation? Well, definitely the background image and also the events part. I think it, it was really interesting uh, to see that specific part that we can use either to promote this like webinars, for example, with that um, option of events in LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. And if you invite um, multiple speakers, so like if you invite the speaker and you have Dan, then they can easily go in and share it with their network. So it, it just like keeps multiplying. Yeah, it's great. Cheryl, one quick question. This was from Rosemary earlier. Um, when you want to do LinkedIn Live, you, they need to actually approve you as like a thought leader. Did you get that approval so that you... I did not. I have not done a LinkedIn Live. I just did a LinkedIn event. Um, Got it. You know who from MCC, uh, Jordan and Diane, though, they've been doing LinkedIn Lives and they're really happy with it. Yeah, it's it's kind of an, 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 it's a newer thing. It's in beta. Rosemary and I are on the wait list. We haven't gotten approved yet, so it's really they're um, they're kind of rolling it out slowly. It's a competitor to to YouTube Live and to Facebook, Facebook Live, Live yeah. and Instagram Live, etc. Um, Jeff uh, Jeffrey Van Stein is, is asking about um, you know if you have like existing contacts in LinkedIn and you want to kind of market to them. There are a lot of third party software out there. We don't have one specific to recommend that are basically about uh, automating your in-mail messaging. Um, and so I think if you look at like uh, LinkedIn marketing automation or LinkedIn email automation, you'll find some good uh, vendors out there that, that do exactly what you're looking to do. Um, you know, is sharing others stories good for engagement? Well, Sasha, you know, absolutely. Um, you also, uh, you know, are building relationships when you do that. Uh, and then um, I wanted to say what I'm going to change on my profile is I'm going to weed out some of the old stuff. But I'm also going to look back at really refining that first paragraph that appears right underneath my name yeah. um, and aligning it with BizHack's core values of learn by doing. Uh, create community and transform lives. Um, we've been working uh, on these core values, and I realized that looking at my 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 thing, it's a little. It's not that it's out of alignment, but it needs to be sharpened. Um, and so I think really having your business story as sharp as possible uh, in your LinkedIn description is is critical. Um, so grateful to all of you guys, and of course to to, to Cheryl uh, for this um, coming up. Uh, Soon, uh, we're going to have uh, lessons from going viral uh, in CMO land. I'm going to be talking in two weeks about the BizHack lead building system, digital marketers graduation, and then uh, a session I know a lot of you are looking forward to in partnership with Safima, uh, who also sponsored today, uh, a Clubhouse, a business guide. Get a season pass to be a part of it. You know, one other thing I just wanted to mention is Cheryl is really a testament to the quality of the uh, certified coaches that we have and the power of one-on-one -on -one coaching. She's also um, in, now also a certified life coach. Coaching is uh, incredibly powerful to really helping you get to the next level in your career. Uh, and we are offering um, coaching packages. If you're interested in learning more, email me at dgretch at bizhack.com. And uh, with that, I want to say join us every week at, on Wednesday at 1230. Uh, thank you again, Cheryl, and all of you for uh, a, a, your, present, your, your great presentation, Cheryl, and for your great questions to everybody. Thanks again, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys very soon. Bye. Bye, everybody. Take care. See you next week.